Hi everyone, I thought I'd do a little kind of, I've called it autumn cosy vlog. Basically, I guess it's like an Instagram live, but I have 21 followers, so I'm not really going to put something up. So yeah, I thought I'd just do a little chatty video for my subscribers really, and try and not edit it too much because I know as soon as it goes into iMovie, I want to cut everything out. But I'm going to try and not edit it too much. I'm going to try and make this a bit casual. So it's it's Halloween when I'm filming this. And I bought like a load of chocolates for the kids. And I'm not going to lie, I've smashed through most of these already. Which is why I don't really have chocolate in the house. But yeah, I've got like a cup of tea. And I thought I'd just chat. And I don't really put my hair up for videos because... It just looks a bit ridiculous. You do, if you're a girl, you do tend to just look like a potato and like you've got no hair. But yeah, I haven't really done one of these videos since I did my little video in the park where I had my breakdown. So yeah, that was fun. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd just do a little, as I say, cosy chat. Just how I am. But yeah, so in general, how is my mental health? So... I think I'm doing, I'm doing okay really. I have had a bit of boy drama recently, which I'm not even going to talk about because I'll get into that a bit later, but I don't think it really warrants a video. But after the last kind of few days, I've, I have felt a bit down and I'm not going to lie, I've been eating the chocolate, sitting in my feelings a bit. And I know that's not the right thing to do because I was doing so well with my like fitness goals and I was, you know, getting up and running and stuff. And just this whole week, it's been really pissy rainy outside all the time and it's difficult to go out running when it's raining. So I'm going to like try and get back into that. But yeah, in general, my mental health is much better. The only thing I struggle with is like I've talked about before on my channel, it's that my channel is maybe not progressing as much as I would like it to. It's, it's difficult to, to put in the time and effort, etc., into a channel when you say, when you're probably going to get like 30 views. And I don't want to be disrespectful to the people that turn up each week and view my content because I'm like so grateful for those people that do that and I know that every view is a person and that's how you have to think about it and you have to think of it in terms of say 90 people watch a video if you had a seminar and 90 people turned up you'd be really pleased and you'd be really happy because 90 people showed up for that seminar and you'd be so pleased and so proud of yourself. But I think because it's just online, people tend to view it as, oh, 90 people watched my video. It's a shame that it wasn't 25,000 people. And I think people can get caught in the numbers a bit. And in, you know, I do try and not get caught in the numbers and I feel like in general I've made a lot of positive steps in my life and I'm like really trying to improve on my life and that is the one thing that holds me back is this feeling that nobody is watching my content and that's what I, I try and not think about. I know at the end of the day it's going to take time for people to trust my content really and I know even when I watch people's videos, I don't subscribe straight away. I tend to watch a few of them. And then once I've got a feel for the channel, then I subscribe. That's why I don't start shrilling in my video, like subscribe, like my videos all the time. I literally can't stand when you watch a YouTuber's video and within the five, first five seconds, they're like, like, subscribe, share. and it gets really samey. And I can tell when YouTubers are generally trying to help people and you can tell the people that are literally just doing it for likes and shares and they want validation. I know I'm biased, but oh, some of my videos, 
I just think are so fucking funny and I just be more people would watch them but I think it's it's gonna take time and I've got to realize that I'm not gonna be this overnight success and I've seen like videos of like PewDiePie and he's like oh I've, got, I've reached a hundred subscribers thank you everyone and I just think it's gonna take it's gonna take a little while for me to get there and I know I will get there in the end I think in terms of my content it, it's difficult as well because I've been trying a lot of different things and whenever I deviate away from dating advice I don't get as many views it's it's difficult because I know people have subscribed mainly for dating content and dating advice and whenever I try and do stuff away from that people aren't really interested and people won't view it and it's difficult if you're a content creator um, you have to constantly balance between what you want to put out and what you know your fans will want to watch in in a way you, you kind of almost have to be selfless and think it doesn't really matter what I want to put out sometimes you like you have to think what will the viewers want what will they like to see how can I help the viewer I think if you just constantly put out content for yourself you can do that when you have you know millions of subscribers but there is this feeling especially at the start you're thinking I don't want to go back to zero I think that is my biggest fear is literally going back to zero and losing the subscriber base that I've built up it's difficult not to think oh I've got what at the moment 191 subscribers and it's taken me nearly two years to get 191 subscribers and it's so difficult not to compare yourself to other people and see that metric and think is what I'm producing valuable to, is what I'm producing to people actually valuable um is it still, should you still be creating content for 30 people that love your content versus producing content for potentially thousands of people? Is it still worthy? Is it still valid? That's definitely what I struggle with. I think it's difficult as well because I was getting to the stage where every Saturday, because I film on a Saturday, every Saturday I'd literally sit down to film and I would think what can I talk about about dating sometimes I feel like I said absolutely everything I can say about dating I feel like I've done it to death I feel like there's only so many times I can word into a video if he's not interested in you don't force it there's there's only so many times I can say that or there's only so many times I can say you know here's this red flag and I kind of got to the point where I felt I felt like my videos weren't as good because I was repeating myself saying the same information and I don't feel like I was adding value so then like I say I tried to branch out but then my subscribers weren't liking the stuff that I put out. So it was like catch 22. So that's why I'm trying to, you know, gradually introduce new content. Um, try, and, try and get more women onto my channel as well. This isn't any disrespect to the men that watch my videos. It's more in terms of a brand strategy going forward females are more likely to subscribe if i want to do brand deals it's going to come from females because men aren't going to buy the stuff if i'm you know marketing anything brand wise if if i want to do this long term i have to get more females onto my channel because i can't like i can't advertise or sell anything to men do you see what i mean 
so it's a case of trying to balance my content between the people that have like been with me for two years versus me trying to ultimately build a business and see this as a long-term goal because I think if I go down the sexy route I could so easily do that I could so easily you know sex myself up produce content for men but it isn't it isn't a it isn't a long-term business goal of mine. It's not gonna be long-lasting, so that's why I'm trying to branch out. But also just for, in terms of personal reasons, talking about dating all the time, it, it kind of gets quite wearing. And I think it's okay to talk about dating if you're in a relationship and you're in a secure relationship and your partner understands that you're talking about dating but the type of content I was doing also like talking about the Tinder messages I've got, etc. In terms of a business model going forward, it relies on me being single and dating, going on dates, almost like a Carrie Bradshaw type figure. And that business model depends on me being single and long term it's not really viable because I don't want to spend the rest of my life single obviously want to find someone you know settle down get married etc so as a business strategy it's not really a great strategy and you have to think how long are people going to sit there and watch my story times about dating eventually they're going to get bored and think yeah we're bored of this we've heard this we've heard this, how are you helping me find someone? That's why I'm trying to move away from dating, I guess. But like I say, it's difficult because that's what people have, have subscribed for. Also in terms of my content, it was difficult because I love producing the funny videos. That's, that's what I find most enjoyable because I'll obviously film them and then they're just more fun to edit because you're editing something that's funny and upbeat and you'll still be laughing at it. But when I was producing the, the sad content where I was expressing that I was sad, the irony is the videos where I'm sad and crying get the most views, which is crazy. But I think people just identify with that and it resonates with a lot of people. So I think that's why they watch. But the only way I can kind of describe it is it's almost a bit like going to a therapy session and you kind of talk about your trauma or talk about whatever and you get it all off your chest. And then the therapist says to you, okay, we're gonna watch back this therapy session 20, 30 times. And as I was editing a video, I was just watching myself cry and cry over again, like trying to cut it all up. And being in a place of like watching myself cry on camera and thinking, is this a good 10 minutes for someone to watch? Would someone like this? And almost desensitizing myself from my trauma. It's, it's such a weird feeling if anyone's like a YouTuber and they have to watch themselves cry, it's such a weird experience. I feel like it was impacting on my love life too because people would say like, when I'm dating, what's your hobbies? And I'd be like, wow, I can't say I do dating. Talks, talk about the dates I've been on because men aren't gonna like that. So I'd usually just say, oh, I just, do self-development videos something like that and then if I did show people what I did on YouTube they'd just be like are you going to talk about me that would be the first thing are you going to talk about me don't talk about me and it's like obviously I'm not going to talk about you if I'm in a relationship with someone I'm not going to blab online about it I'm going to keep it private there's a lot of things I don't talk about online 
I think maybe sometimes when people watch YouTubers online, they can tend to feel that they know everything about the YouTuber and they can tend to feel that they're like friends with the YouTuber. And obviously, you know, I do care about the subscribers and the people that I interact with. But there's still like, there's still like a wall in the distance and people don't really know me. They see an edited version of me a week, like 10 minutes of me um, every week. And they don't know the real me, what I've been through, etc. And it's difficult to convey that on camera within 10 minutes. And so I was kind of struggling with this, how much do I share? How much do I share to be vulnerable? And at the same time, how much do I keep back for myself? And just talking about dating all the time, I feel like it was just getting in the way of relationships because it wasn't, it wasn't letting things grow. And yeah, sometimes I feel like I've been way too personal online still like torn between yeah whether I've been too personal or not I don't know I don't know maybe I'll cross the line sometimes and been too vulnerable there is part of me that thinks um should I stop now I mean I started producing videos mainly because I was in lockdown and there was no other stimulus I couldn't go anywhere I couldn't do anything I couldn't see anyone so I guess in essence it was kind of like a therapy in a way just getting out all my emotions because I had no one to physically tell all my feelings to so that's why I started doing it but now that I can leave the house now that I can see friends it's it's a constant balancing act between fitting everything in and I literally don't even have a relationship on top of that to balance everything and I'm still struggling. It was getting to the point where I was thinking, right, I either make a video this week or I go out with my friends. What am I gonna choose? I either make a video this weekend or I see my family. It's so difficult. I constantly feel this juggling act between trying to balance everything and I don't even have children or anything to worry about. But it's definitely more difficult now, especially when you're in that building phase of trying to get something off the ground. You feel like you just have to sacrifice so much to get things going. As in if I meet someone and say if I like meet someone and they live in London, I know that that's gonna wipe out my Saturday seeing that person and nurturing a relationship whereas if i didn't do that i could be sitting at home making a video and putting it up and part of me thinks i've got to kind of weigh things up in life and think what is more important to me what do i want do i want to have a youtube career and be independent from my corporate job or do i want a relationship and I'm definitely feeling this at the moment, thinking I can't fit everything in and something's gonna have to slide and I don't wanna be like, <laughs> I know it's really irritating when you when you watch YouTubers and I've got too much to do. And yeah, I know it's really irritating, I'm really sorry. I know it's a 21st century problem, but it is it is what you have to think about if, if you're doing this, if you're doing this career, is that it's gonna be a constant juggling act and you're gonna let people down and piss them off. So that's why, so that's why now I only go on a date if I feel a real connection with someone and I'm really, really excited about it. If I don't get that feeling, then I don't go on a date basically because I see doing my YouTube is more important in the long run. I never want to get into the situation where I'm just so dependent on a man and I've got blinkers on and all I can think about is my relationship with someone. 
I've actually filmed a video about this which is coming up. Um, I don't know which one of these I'll release first. I think my camera's going to cut out. Yeah, I think I'll leave it there basically. I've kind of said what I've wanted to say and not my usual kind of podcast, but yeah. I guess more like an Instagram live, but uploaded to YouTube. Thanks for watching everyone. Take care, happy Halloween and see you soon.